So welcome to the five simple ways to win at New Year's resolutions webinar. I'm your host, Brian Elaine, and of course, John Acuff will be presenting this webinar in just a minute. John is the New York Times bestselling author of five books, including Do Over, his latest, which is an amazing book. Uh, we're going to give another 30 seconds or so for people to file in and get settled. Uh, like John has been talking about on social media, this is a quick one. This is 16 minutes of content, but it's great content. Really think you're going to love it as we get ready to roll over into 2016. Uh, in fact, depending on where you are right now, we've got about 30 hours left in 2015. I'm on the East Coast in the United States, so I only have 28 hours left. If you're watching this from outside of the U.S., you might have even less time until 2016. But no matter where you're watching this from, we just want to say thank you for joining us. And I am going to pass the mic now, so take it away, John. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. I think it's actually already 2017 in Japan, um, but I'm not... I'm not good at time zones, so I might be off at that. Thank you so much for the introduction, Brian, and thanks for watching tonight. As Brian mentioned, it's going to be really fast because you're really busy. So I told you it would be 16 minutes to a better 2016, so I'm actually going to start my timer. I've got my phone right here. I'm starting my timer. When that goes off, I will be done with the webinar. Um, you're too busy for a long, long webinar. So I got really passionate about goal setting and what can happen when you really focus on your next year, 21 years ago when I was a freshman in college. When I was a freshman, my first semester was a mess. Um, I got a 2-4, I got rejected from every fraternity, I was out of shape, I was just a grumpy jerk and had a really bad semester. And that Christmas, I got a letter from my college, Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama, that told me I was on the edge of losing my scholarships. I had a couple of scholarships that I had to maintain a 3.0 for the whole year, and I was about to lose them because I had gotten a 2.4. Uh, and it really hit me that I needed to work on my goals. I needed to figure out what my next year was going to look like. And so I did. I came up with a plan. I came up with a strategy. And the next semester, that spring, I worked so hard, and I hustled so hard, and I ended up getting a 4.0. I got straight A's and my average for the year was 3.00001 and I just barely made it. And on the one hand, you can say, well, that's, that's a great story, like triumph, hooray, like Rocky, like did you climb stairs at the end and like, ah. But what happened after that semester was pretty terrible. That summer, I kind of fell apart. I was just so exhausted from white knuckling my goals. Um, and the semester after that, the next fall, I didn't get straight A's. I didn't maintain that. It wasn't sustainable. It wasn't scalable. And so I had this kind of panicked moment where I really tried my goals, but I couldn't maintain it. And I don't want that for you, and I don't want that for me. I want us to have long-range goals, not just get excited about January or get excited about September or a certain weekend or a certain month. So I really want us to be focused on long range goals we can actually keep and actually execute. And the reason we have a hard time with that, the reason it's difficult to win at our resolutions or our goals is that there's all these enemies that get in the way. There's all these obstacles. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. The five obstacles that get in your way. Because that's really how you have a great new year. That's how you have a, a great, big, fun year is that you deal with these things that are going to come up. Because it's really easy right at the beginning. Anyone can crush the first week. It's the second week and the second month and the, the third month that make it difficult. So I'm going to talk a little about the enemies. The first enemy that you have to deal with is perfectionism. I've got some slides I'm going to pull up and share with you guys. The first one is the idea that you have to be perfect, that what you work on has to be absolutely perfect at all times. And that's a really challenging enemy that we're all going to deal with because perfectionism comes in and says, okay, if it's not perfect, it doesn't count. If it's not exactly right, it doesn't count. And maybe you've struggled with that before. We have this myth right now that maybe you'll find a perfect purpose or a perfect passion and a calling. Like you're only going to have one calling in your life and it'll hit you like a lightning bolt and you'll just know when you feel this pressure, like maybe everyone else has a perfect calling. Maybe I'm the crazy one. I can't figure out my calling and I'm not opposed to purpose or passion or calling, but sometimes a calling becomes a really great hiding place for when you don't want to do the work you know you're supposed to do. And when you think about a calling, it's kind of funny because when I was in college, I couldn't have picked what I'm doing now as my major or my calling. 
I do a lot with social media. A lot of you found out about this webinar because of social media. I couldn't have majored in that when I was in college because it didn't exist. But we put this perfect pressure on ourselves. And I guarantee right now, some of you are sitting there thinking, I can't hustle this year. I can't hustle right now because I don't know the perfect thing to hustle on. And the problem is there's a lot of people right now watching this webinar that have perfect unfinished books stuck on their laptops. There are people watching this right now who have perfect business ideas stuck in notebooks. And in order to accomplish anything, you have to be brave enough to be imperfect. That's how I feel every time I write a book, especially if I go to the library or a bookstore. There's just so many other great books and I feel overwhelmed and I don't want to do that first draft or that second draft or that third draft. But the truth is, I don't get the final draft unless I start with something that's imperfect. And what I've learned is this, messy and finished beats perfect and incomplete every time. Let me repeat that because it's a slide and when you make a slide, you should repeat things emphatically. Messy and finished beats perfect and incomplete every time. So my challenge to you with this enemy, because I'm going to give you one challenge you can do per enemy. My challenge is do one imperfect thing tomorrow. Send an imperfect email, write an imperfect blog post, run an imperfect mile. That's my challenge regarding perfectionism. The second enemy, the second big enemy you're going to face is comparison. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. And I actually learned this lesson from a friend in college about comparison. I had a big paper due. Maybe you've had that feeling before where you've got a huge term paper due. And I was asking everyone in class, hey, how far along are you? Where are you on your paper? Have you finished your paper? Have you done the research? And I was kind of polling everyone. And my friend pulled me inside and said, hey, never compare because you lose either way. He said, if you're ahead of somebody, if you're further down the road, you feel cocky and you feel safe and you start to coast. And if you're behind somebody, if they're ahead of you, you feel ashamed, you feel discouraged, and you'll stop. So it's lose, lose either way. And sometimes we forget that about comparison, and we keep comparing what we're doing to other people, and it's really, really toxic. So here's a, here's a simple lesson I've learned about comparison over the years that I think, I think makes a lot of sense and is one that I've seen a lot of people forget, a lot of people struggle with, and it's this. Here's, here's the lesson. Comparison leads to arrogance or shame, but never happiness. It leads to arrogance or shame, but never happiness. And the, the challenge is right now for you and I in our culture is that it's easier than ever to compare your life to somebody else's life. With the internet, that's really, really simple. You can compare to a million people. You can look on Instagram and feel inadequate about your goals right now. You can go online and one of your friends is already crushing it with like green weird shakes of kale and hopelessness and they're doing crunches and they're like hanging from bars with like weights on one hand, like a tire on the other and their foot is on fire. And you look at that and you feel inadequate and you think your goal doesn't matter, your goal doesn't count and you compare. Because the reality is we've always had this struggle of the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. It's just now with the internet, we have access to 10 million backyards. We can see over a lot of fences. And comparison will wreck you if you're not careful. So my challenge to you about comparison is I dare you to unfollow one person you're envious of. One person on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, somebody that when you look at their feed, you automatically get this sense of, I'm not good enough. Now, if it's your mom or like a close friend or somebody, there's going to be drama, like they're going to text you and go, why'd you don't follow me on Instagram? You know, like my dog, what's up with my dog? Don't do that. Don't, that's, that's too much drama to distract you right now. But I dare you to unfollow one person that you struggle with. The third, the third enemy you're going to have to deal with is isolation. Isolation is a huge enemy because we often get this idea that we have to go it alone. That when you do goals, when you work on something that matters, when you work on something you care about, that you have to go through it step by step all by yourself. It's this me against the world mentality and it's absolutely ridiculous. And so the third enemy is isolation. How do we figure out people that can support us? Because you need people who will encourage you. You need people who challenge you and cheer for you and question you. Big dreams take big teams. And we need people that'll question us. I remember a friend of mine once challenged me on a blog I wrote. I wrote a blog post about Donald Miller, this author who wrote this book, Blue Like Jazz. He sold a million copies. And I wrote this blog post where I said, who's going to be the next Donald Miller? 
And I ended the blog post that way. And I said, who will be the next Donald Miller? And people commented. And my friend called me up and said, hey, you ended it that way because you wanted people to say you. You wanted other people to tell you that you were going to be the next Donald Miller. And that was hard to hear, but he was right. And I didn't receive it that moment. I'm not this amazing person that goes, oh, thank you for that difficult information you gave me. Now I'm pretty sure my first response was, you're wrong, forget, ah, and I hung up. But I need people to question me because what I've learned and what you'll learn too is that leaders who can't be questioned end up doing questionable things. Let me, let me repeat that. Leaders who can't be questioned end up doing questionable things. We need community because community calls us to heights we cannot call ourselves. So as you hustle, as you work on your goals, you're going to need community. So your challenge with the enemy of isolation is that I want you to find one to three people you can talk to about your goals. This year, as you head into some new challenges, I want your goals to be bigger than just you. I want you to admit that you need other people to help carry them. And I want you to fight for community. The fourth enemy of having an amazing year of really working on your goals is ego. It, it's ego. That's the one we wrestle with the most sometimes. And ego will tell you you can't ask questions and you can't admit weaknesses. You've got to be strong. Put on a good face. Pretend you already know the answers. I see this a lot with leaders. There are leaders and other speakers that I run into that only talk about two things. The times they've won, their victories, or a failure from 20 years ago they no longer care about. Because old school thinking used to say, if I share my weaknesses, people won't trust my strengths. New school leadership says, if I pretend I don't have weaknesses, people won't trust my strengths. And, and here's the reality. You really need to deal with ego in order to grow. Because you don't get to strengthen the weaknesses you pretend you don't have. You don't get to strengthen those, the ones you hide. If your ego tells you to cover up your weaknesses, you'll never go stronger. The crazy thing is when you admit them to other people, to your circle of friends, when you tell somebody, hey, you know what, I think I might have a temper, they're never surprised. Have you ever had that experience where you tell somebody that and they go, what, no, you, you have a temper? Of course they already know. They're just waiting for you to tell them, waiting for you to see that. So I dare you to, to fight ego. The next time you make a decision, ask yourself, is this the best thing for me to do or just the best feeling thing for my ego? Enemy number five, the last one, comfort. Comfort. There's this myth going around online right now that you're going to find a dream job, a perfect job where you only do things you love all the time. I actually saw another author in my space say that if you don't love 90% of the things that it takes to be in your industry, you're in the wrong industry. 90%. I thought that's ridiculous. That means in a 40 hour work week, there's only four hours that I'm not running through a field with ribbons and unicorns. Most people have longer than a four hour commute every week. You're going to have to do things that don't make you feel comfortable. But here's what you learn about comfort. Great lives are rarely created in great comfort. You're going to hustle, you're going to grind. I've never met a musician in Nashville that told me, you know what, John? I got the most successful when I got the most comfortable. When life got safe enough and easy enough, I was able to write my best music. No, what they say is, when life got hard, when I was pushed to the edge, when I had given all I thought I had to give, I found something else I didn't even know I had. You've got to fight comfort. Because here's a, here's a big lesson I've learned over the years. The amount of growth you get will be determined by the amount of comfort you sacrifice. The amount of growth you get will be determined by the amount of comfort you sacrifice. So those are the five enemies, perfectionism, comparison, isolation, ego, and comfort. Now I couldn't cover everything about goal setting in 16 minutes, but I wanted to make sure that I gave you as many ideas as I could. I promised that this would be packed with ideas. So here's 30 things in addition to the five that if you want to what's next, if you're looking at that going, okay, I've got the enemies down. What do I do next? Here's 30 quick ideas. Number one, pick a what. Pick something you're going to work on. Number two, find your why. Number three, get your how. How are you going to make it happen? Number four, make it fun or it won't get done. That one rhymed. That's really pretty helpful. Number five, win with win. You've got to plan when you're going to work on something. Number six, keep where a priority. Seven, fight for community. Eight, create a vision. Number nine, cut your goal in half. 
Number 10, find your triggers. There's triggers that make it difficult for you to finish something. Number 11, use the two most powerful words to overcome obstacles, which are if and then, by the way. Number 12, grab data as fast as you can. Number 13, find a who ahead of you, somebody further down the road than you. Number 14, go where the knowledge is free. Build a personal library. Number 15, mark your progress or you'll never know you're making any. Number 16, beat the dip when you want to quit. Number 17, get a big soundtrack for your big adventure. You've got to have some music along the way. Number 18, admit that balloons fly higher with, without anchors. There are some anchors in your life you're going to have to let go of. Number 19, reach new heights with new tools. Number 20, batch, batch, batch. Don't try to do it one at a time. Find ways to batch complete things. Number 21, rest or burn out. The choice is yours. Number 22, give up perfect. Number 23, make hustle a lifestyle, not an axe body spray. Number 24, drag your excuses into the bright light of truth. Number 25, turn the whole thing into a game. Number 26, look into the future if you want to change today. 27, be grateful. 28, forget a watchman, go set a timer, Harper Leaf reference. 29, use the power of habits. 30, be brave enough to brag. Those are 30 quick ideas. And the reason I've been working on those ideas, the reason why those are fresh, is that for the last 18 months, I helped 10,000 people go through their goals. 10,000 people hustle and I turned it into a program I called the 30 Days of Hustle. And this is the week that I've launched it. We've got 1,800 people just like you working on their dreams. And when you join, you get five different things. You get 30 brand new videos from me, one each day for the 30 Days of Hustle Challenge. Access to a private Facebook community. You wanna talk about killing isolation? Come meet 1,800 people that'll encourage you. You get the 30 Days of Hustle workbook, daily email reminders, the 30 Days of Hustle worksheet, and all these amazing bonuses. So if you wanna get that, go to 30daysofhustle.com. I could give you a fragment of what it takes to have a great year, but if you want the full experience, I dare you to join me in the 30 days of hustle.com challenge. Registration closes to, uh, Friday night, Friday night at midnight. At midnight Pacific time, registration closes, and we're going to keep it closed. So I dare you to come join the challenge. Plus, if you're watching this webinar right now and you register tonight before midnight, I'll give you a special bonus webinar about making it through the middle. How do you get through the middle of January? Because that's where most goals end. So I hope you've had a good time tonight. I certainly have sharing all these ideas. My timer just went off. I don't know if you can hear that. My timer's off, but that's 16 minutes and I promised you it would be fast. So it's gonna be a huge fun year. I know I threw a ton of content at you and to tell you the truth, the 30 days of hustle.com is really 90 days of content. It's a ton of content. If you're able to finish it in 30 days, I'll be amazed. But I always want to have more value than you think you're going to get. So it's very specific directions. It's very specific instructions. And if right now you're thinking, you know what? I want next year to be different. You have to make different decisions this year. And it's going to be really fun. My wife Jenny joins me in some of the videos because I've always thought, when I see people on stage or authors, I want to know what their spouse would say about what they're really working on. It's really easy for somebody to front on a webinar or front in a speech or front in a book. What's the real story like and how do you hustle? So that's what the program's about. Again, it's 30 days, 30 videos. Get it at 30daysofhustle.com. I'll put the link right there. I think I know how to do this. Oh my gosh, so fancy. All right, there, I just, uh, I just uploaded the link. So if you sign up by midnight tonight, you'll get another free webinar about figuring out how to make it through the middle. It's really easy that first week to have an exciting dream and then the middle of any goal just sucks. Like it just flat out, it's not fun at all. So how do you make it through the middle? That's, that's what I'll include if you sign up tonight. So again, you've got until midnight tonight to get that free bonus webinar and then sign up closes for the whole thing Friday night at midnight. So I can't wait to see any questions you have. I'll be around on Twitter. It's been really fun already this week. It's a slingshot week. Remember, there's going to be five enemies coming your way, regardless if you, if you do the 30 days of hustle. And I hope you do. And if it's a money thing, if you don't love it, if it's not the best thing you've done regarding your goals, I'll refund your money. Like, I don't want you to be unhappy. Like, I'll give you all the dollars back because it's going to be really, really good. So regardless of if you do the program, though, watch out for those five enemies. There's perfectionism, there's isolation, there's comparison, there's ego, and the last one is comfort. So I promised you 16 minutes, so I'm going to sign off now.
thank you so much for watching. Why do I keep doing my hands this way? I feel it feels very, I need to develop a different thing. Like I think I'm going to go back and watch this replay and be like, what was I doing with my hands? It makes no sense. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.